What is going on guys and welcome back to another very exciting video. In this video we are going to be doing something a little bit different. I want to do a deep dive into valuation and what we're going to go over in this video is EPS numbers as well as PE ratios around PayPal. And a lot of new stock market investors get things confused. They will look at stock prices, whether a stock is trading at $200 or $50 and determine how valuable the company is based off that. And there are a lot of other factors. We obviously have market cap, but personally what I I like to look at is PE ratio because that gives you a good insight to how much you're paying for a certain amount of earnings. So we're going to go over some projections around PayPal's business, where it could be headed in terms of its EPS numbers, and then finally give price targets of where PayPal could be in around a year to two years from now in terms of its stock price. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. So when you look at a stock, there are a few different metrics you can pay attention to. The first one to note is market market cap. So market cap for PayPal is sitting at $64.2 billion. However, this is very unimportant because the market cap of a company doesn't really tell you anything about the stock and where it could be headed in the future. It just tells you what the current value of all of the shares outstanding are on the marketplace. So right now, PayPal is sitting just under $65 billion. If you were to look at a company like Apple and pull up their stock chart, they're sitting around $3 trillion. So that is just the overall value of the business. However, what's more important in my opinion is looking at the PE ratio and I have it highlighted down here. This for Google is the trailing PE ratio. So there are two metrics commonly with PE ratio. There's a trailing 12 month PE ratio and there is a forward PE ratio. The trailing 12 month PE ratio is looking at previous earnings while the forward PE ratio is looking at future earnings. So what exactly is a PE ratio? Here we have on Investopedia the equation for what a PE ratio is. We have the market value per share or the stock price divided by the earnings per share. And the stock price is easy to find if you Google it. PayPal right now is sitting around $58. However, the earnings per share can vary quite a bit depending on what you are looking at because a lot of companies will display their gap earnings per share, but also their non-gap earnings per share. So you need to be careful that you're consistently using the same EPS number and not switching between the two, especially when you're comparing companies and their PE ratios. So what you can do is you can go on Yahoo Finance and look up any stock that you would like and under the statistics tab you can find the trailing P ratio as well as the forward P ratio. Personally I like looking at the forward P ratio just because it gives you an idea of where the business is headed in the future and we can see for PayPal it is currently trading at a 10.33 forward P ratio however a year ago it was trading around a 17.67 forward P ratio. So keep in mind what these numbers actually mean. A year ago you were paying around $17.60 for every $1 of EPS that PayPal was generating. However, today you are only having to pay $10.33 for that same $1 of EPS. So keep in mind, these P ratios can fall for a number of different reasons. So it's important to look into what's actually happening with the company. And in PayPal's case, we're seeing competition coming into the marketplace that is scaring a lot of investors. We're seeing companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, all rolling out their own payment processors that could affect PayPal's market share for online payments. However, even with that, we can take a look at the analysis tab on Yahoo Finance and we can see that there are 37 analysts covering the stock for PayPal and projecting what their EPS will be over the next couple of years. And for 2023 numbers, they have an average estimate of $4.95. The low and the high don't vary a whole lot off of that number. However, for 2024, we could see that there are again 37 analysts covering the stock and they have an average EPS number of $5.64 a low of $5.34, and a high EPS target of $5.99. So as I mentioned earlier, you need to consider gap versus non-gap earnings. So what Yahoo Finance is showing here is non-gap earnings. And the reason I know that is when we come down and look at the earnings history, we can see that they reported $1.16 of EPS on June 29th of 2023. And if we go over to PayPal's website, we can see that for the second quarter of 2023, they reported a non non-gap EPS number of $1.16. However, their gap EPS number came in at $0.92. Cents. And just to show you where you can run into some of those issues, here we have the website Macro Trends. So if you're looking at their EPS numbers, they all have them in gap. And the reason we can see that, again, is the most recent quarter is $0.92 cents for PayPal, which we just saw as their gap EPS number. So as part of this video, I wanted to take a look at EPS growth over the last five years for PayPal. And what we can see is in two 
2018, they were bringing in around $1.71 in gap EPS. However, in 2023, they're bringing in around $3.57 in gap EPS. And that is equivalent to around a 17.5% growth rate year over year in their gap EPS numbers. I also ran the same calculation for non-gap EPS numbers, and we can see that it comes out to around 17% as well. So we will use that 17% number here in a second. However, let's jump back and look at EPS numbers for 2024. On Yahoo Finance, they had an average EPS estimate of $5.64, a low of $5.34, and a high of $5.99. And if we compare those to the current price of around $58.50, we get P ratios as follows, 9.97, 10.53, and 9.39. And here's where things start to get interesting, because if we take those EPS numbers from 2024 and project them out to 2025 with 17% growth, we get earnings of around $6.64 for average, $6.29 for low, and $7.05 for the high. And things really start to get interesting when we look at the PE ratio and what increasing the earnings actually does to it. In this specific situation, we're holding the price constant at $58.50. That's the stock price. And we're increasing this lower part of the equation, the earnings by 17%. And what that ends up doing to the PE ratio is dropping it. We can see that the average average PE ratio now went down to 8.81, the low went down to 9.3, and the high went down to 8.29. However, currently the market is valuing it at closer to a 10 forward PE ratio. So what this ends up doing to the stock price is as earnings increase, we would expect that the stock price would also increase with it. And if we were to maintain the same PE ratios that we saw previously, as the earnings increase, the stock price would go up to around 60 $6.21, which would be a 13.2% return from the current stock price. And this all really makes sense when you think about it, because valuation is just a perception of a company's worth. When you think about where PayPal is going and what valuations are against a business, it all depends on what an investor perceives in terms of the amount of growth that that business is going to be experiencing in the years to come. And for PayPal, a lot of investors are pricing in that the competition is going to start stealing a lot of market share, and that is going to hurt PayPal's top line and bottom line numbers. However, if we don't see that happen and we see them continue to grow their EPS numbers at the rate that they have previously over the last five years, then it makes a lot of sense that we will start seeing their price go up as well. The purpose of this video is not to tell you that PayPal is extremely undervalued. That is something you have to determine on your own based off your own estimates, because what you are going to find is if you believe that Apple and Amazon and Google are going to come in and steal a lot of market share away from PayPal, then you would want to bring down your EPS estimates. And that is going to affect your valuations and where the stock will ultimately trade in the future. However, hopefully this gives you a good starting point on how to run those calculations and come up with your own valuations of a business. But with all of that said, do not buy a company just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.